Welcome to the Pulse Report. I'm Dr. Shen, a cardiologist specializing in electrophysiology and the Director of Research and Education at Cardiovascular Medicine. Today, I'll walk you through what to expect with a pacemaker implantation procedure. By the end of this episode, I hope to give you and your loved ones a clear picture of what happens before, during, and after the procedure so you feel informed and reassured every step of the way. Before your pacemaker is implanted, there are a few important steps to prepare. First, you'll meet with your care team. They'll go over your medical history in detail, including any past heart conditions, procedures, and medications. This step helps ensure the procedure is safe and tailored to your specific needs. Next, you may have some tests to confirm the diagnosis and guide the plan. These can include an EKG, which records your heart rhythm, an echocardiogram, which uses ultrasound to show the heart structure and pumping function, or simple blood work to check your overall health before surgery. Your doctor may need to adjust some of your medications, especially blood thinners. In certain cases, you may be asked to stop them temporarily. These instructions are critical to reduce bleeding risk during the procedure. Always follow your care team's guidance closely, and remember, never stop or change medications on your own. On the day of your implant, you'll be asked to arrive fasting after midnight. This means no food or drink after bedtime. Fasting helps reduce risks with anesthesia and keeps the procedure as safe as possible. The procedure itself is usually done with local anesthesia and sedation. This means you'll be awake during the implantation but very relaxed and drowsy, and you shouldn't feel pain. Patients are often relieved to find the experience very manageable. Let's take a closer look at what actually happens during a pacemaker implantation. The procedure begins with a small incision just below your collarbone, most often on the left side. This provides access to the vein that leads into your heart. Your doctor gently threads thin wires, or leads, through this vein into your heart chambers. These leads are positioned precisely using X-ray guidance, ensuring they can deliver electrical signals that keep your heart beating in a steady rhythm. Once the leads are in place, they are connected to the pacemaker generator, a small device that contains a battery and computer circuitry. The generator is then tucked under the skin of your chest, usually in a small pocket created during the incision. Before finishing, your care team will perform a detailed check to make sure the leads are working correctly, the generator is functioning as programmed, and your heart is responding appropriately. Some adjustments will be made in real time to ensure accuracy. Then, we'll gently close the incision with stitches and surgical glue and place a clean, sterile dressing over it to protect the area and help it heal. From start to finish, the procedure usually takes about one to two hours, though the exact time can vary depending on your heart and any adjustments your doctor needs to make. Right after the procedure, you'll stay in the recovery area for a few hours. During this time, your heart rhythm and incision are watched closely to make sure everything is stable. Nurses will check your pacemaker site, heart rhythm, blood pressure, and oxygen levels. You will receive a chest x-ray and a device check prior to discharge. Also, they may apply an arm sling to ensure that your arm movement is safe. Most patients are able to go home the same day, though in some cases your doctor may recommend staying overnight for additional monitoring. Before you leave, your care team will test the pacemaker with a programmer to confirm that it's working correctly and they'll take time to explain how the device functions. In the first days after surgery, your arm on the side of the implant may feel sore. To protect the leads and incision, you'll need to avoid lifting your arm above your shoulder for about two to four weeks. This gives the device and tissues time to heal securely. Once you return home after your pacemaker procedure, recovery is usually smooth. Here's what to expect and how to care for yourself. It's normal to have some mild bruising, swelling, or soreness around the incision site. These symptoms usually improve within a few days. Be sure to keep the incision clean and dry. You can shower, but remember to place a towel over the dressing and avoid letting water run directly on it. Leave the top dressing in place until your wound check in clinic, which typically happens 10 to 14 days after your procedure. For the first couple of weeks, avoid heavy lifting, pushing, or pulling with your arms, 
This gives the incision and leads sufficient time to heal securely. Walking and doing light everyday activities are not just safe; they're a good idea. Moving around helps you heal. Follow-up visits are an essential part of care. During these visits, your team will check the pacemaker leads and device settings to ensure everything is working properly. This is also a good time to ask questions about your activity level, incision healing, or anything else you've noticed since the procedure. In general, people return to normal activities within a few weeks. In addition to mild bruising, swelling, or soreness near the incision, other normal recovery symptoms after pacemaker implantation may include mild chest or shoulder discomfort near the implant site, especially when moving the arm on that side. Temporary fatigue for the first few days as your body adjusts, minor oozing or tenderness around the incision, and small lump or bump where the pacemaker generator sits under the skin. These issues are usually mild and short-lived, but if you notice severe pain, fever, worsening redness or swelling, drainage or dizziness, these are not normal, and you should seek medical help right away. Now let's talk about what life looks like once you're living with a pacemaker. Research has shown that modern pacemakers are reliable. On average, the battery lasts between seven and twelve years. When it runs low, the generators will be replaced in a minor outpatient procedure. You'll receive a pacemaker ID card that lists the type of device you have, the manufacturer, and other important details. It's a good idea to keep this card with you at all times in your wallet or on your phone, so healthcare providers can access the information if you ever need medical care. The good news is that most household electronics are completely safe. Things like microwaves, cell phones, and home appliances won't interfere with your pacemaker. But you'll need to be cautious around strong magnets, like those found in large speakers or industrial equipment, and certain security systems, such as metal detectors or anti-theft gates in stores. If you're ever unsure, simply show your ID card and ask to walk around rather than through the system. Once you're healed. You can return to exercise, travel, and your normal activities. Many people forget they even have a pacemaker after the first few months. The device is there to support your heart rhythm, not limit your lifestyle. Even though most patients recover smoothly, it's important to know the warning signs that need immediate medical attention. If you develop severe chest pain or sudden shortness of breath, call your doctor right away or go to the emergency room. These could signal a heart-related complication. If you experience dizziness, fainting, or a return of very slow heartbeats, your pacemaker may not be functioning properly and needs urgent evaluation. Keep an eye on your incision. If you see more redness, swelling, warmth, or drainage, it could be a sign of infection and needs quick care. A fever or unexplained chills can also signal infection, either at the incision or in your bloodstream, and should never be ignored. These problems don't happen often, but if they do, get help right away. When in doubt, call your doctor or go to the emergency room. It's always better to be safe. Now let's talk about what to expect as you return to your normal life after pacemaker implantation. Recovery usually begins quickly. Within the first 24 hours, most patients can walk, eat normally, and take care of light chores. By about one week. Many are able to return to desk work and their regular daily routines. That said, it's very important to protect the healing incision and leads. For the first two to four weeks, avoid heavy lifting, pushing, or pulling with your arms. Walking and light daily activity, on the other hand, are safe and encouraged. They help your recovery. You may be prescribed short-term antibiotics or pain relievers to help with incision care. Some patients also continue or adjust their blood thinners depending on their individual health needs. Always follow your doctor's guidance and never change medications on your own. Your pacemaker will be checked in the clinic within one to two weeks to confirm that the leads are stable and the device is working properly. After that, regular follow-up visits are essential. These visits allow your care team to fine-tune the device settings and ensure your heart rhythm remains well supported. So that's the pacemaker procedure in a nutshell: a careful preparation with tests and medication review, a safe one to two hour procedure to place the leads and generator, a recovery that's often same day or next, some short term medicines for healing, 
and a follow-up check within the first two weeks to make sure everything is working properly. A pacemaker is a small device used to regulate heart rate. For many patients, it helps maintain stable rhythms, reduce symptoms such as fatigue or dizziness, and support a safe return to normal activities. If you found this guide helpful, please share it with loved ones who may be preparing for a pacemaker procedure. And don't forget, you can find a patient-friendly pocket guide linked in the episode notes. Thank you for listening to The Pulse Report. I'm Dr. Shen, and let's keep your heart and your life going strong and in rhythm.